You're listening to Midweek Voices and for this part of the programme I'm here with Michael Fortune. We often talk to Michael on the programme and he's a folklorist and he's involved in many projects. And this time of the year he's involving himself with the Wexford Maybush Festival. Now it may not happen until May but a lot of things are happening in the lead up to it. And uh, it's nice to see you Michael. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for coming out. Last year we spoke about the May bush as well in great detail, and uh, I remember one of the things that they did last year was people who didn't have a May bush were able to collect the May bush. I think the county council or somebody made them available, and that scheme is up and running again this year. Yeah, myself and Alien Lambert, we set up the Wexford May bush festival ah, for about about five years ago, and uh, in the last couple of years we've decided it would be the gift people a little a little white horn a little skiok. Uh, to grow in their own home or in their community or in the school. And last year we had about 175 to 200 bushes went around all around the county with a huge uptake. And this year we got 300. We, I asked uh, Kleena um, in the, uh, the Environment Department for 300 trees for the, for the Maybush Festival. And we got our 300 trees only last week. But the demand is, it was incredible. Last year we were actually kind of, people were calling to our houses and we were kind of, kind of not very unscientifically getting them out to people, you know, through pe- drop, dropping off here and there and pickups. But this year we put out a call and we had about 25 different community groups from, from Kyle Nearn right down to Von Clody, down to uh, Camp Hyle and Kilran, all, all over the county where people actually took little bunches and they distributed them for us under the umbrella of the Wexford Maybush Festival. And I think people see the, the value. This work is all voluntary on our behalf because we, we, we myself and Aileen, we grew up with the Maybush, but we were we didn't want to see it fade away. You know, It was, it was still part of the fabric of, of the county. A lot of older people still did it. But we kind of wanted to get, give it a new injection of life and get more people doing it. And almost to to create the, the Wexford Maybush Festival in the sense of basically to, 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 to stand Wexford out in the, in, in, in the rest of the country for the month of May. So we'd actually own the Maybush. And that's what's after happening. It's, we're, we're blown away. It's been, it's been brilliant. So you're very surprised by all of this interest. And you, you have a map here in front of me. And the map shows that there's interest in all parts of County Wexford, not just certain parts which you could understand, mm-hmm. but the whole county, north, south, east and west, um, they all want to have a Maybush and they all want to be part of the festival. Yeah, and that, that's what's lovely about it. We're so used to the word festival, Dan, being a kind of an idea that's almost sometimes festivals are parachuted into towns and places and they're kind of, you know, they're, they don't come from the ground up. What I love about this is the fact that actually the festival is by your participation, whether it's done at the quiet of your own home in Owlert or whether it's done at a community event in, in down in New Ross, you're, you're part of the festival. And that's what people kind of see and people kind of want to be part of that. And that's what's really, really special about it. And that's what's really hit people and kind of uh, uh, that's, the, that's the success of it. And, and I'm glad that myself and Aileen are being able to manage that. I suppose for years we, we, we do, we've done so much project work in folklore, traditional kind of project, traditional arts project work that we, we, we could see what, what the end result was going to be. But uh, it's, a, it's just it's a snowball in front of us. The amount of work goes unreal. The amount of work is, is massive, you know, just replying to emails and texts and people and all that. But, uh, but listen, it's worth it in the end. It'll be there when we're dead and gone in, in 100 years' time. Hopefully someone in Maybush will be growing and it'll be remembered. Now it's called the Maybush Planting Scheme and it began last year and as you say it's bigger and better this year. So people will get their new crop of Maybushes. Now I think you told me last year that if you got a Maybush last week it won't exactly be uh, up to it for this May. It might take another May or the May after that. Yeah, they're very small. They're only little slips, and that's supposed to kind of the magic of them. In some ways, people kind of like planting them and watching them grow. Now, we last year we gave them out in February last year, and we actually got photographs from schools. We got one photograph of a little uh, uh, of a. Uh, the school in Morrentown and I've seen the school in Ferns as well was the same the one in Morrentown was the, the, the May bush was only uh, maybe a foot and a half off the ground but the poor little thing was bending We, I actually have a little poem I might I might get it for you that a man wrote about the, the May bush will I, get, will I get it for you? Yeah see if, see if you can find it there No, I'm after finding this poem for you Dan <laughs> <laughs> Yes that was quick it, it was quick <laughs> it was written by a man called Larry Dunn from Rosslair Harbour and was written on Saturday night uh, after he got his hands on a little a little slip of May bush and it says it's a four-liner. In February, my slender and fragile bush would hardly t- support a little thrush. But come the spring and the dews of May, in the gentle breezes, it will stoutly sway. And that's it. That's one man's interpretation of the May bush. Yeah, it's not lovely. Just, well, he, he, he can see that the fact that the little thing that he got is going to get bigger and stronger and it'll grow. And every May it'll, it'll be there, there in his garden and there in part of his life as well. So there's, a, there's something really special about it. And I think just watching them growing is, is what's, what's the magic here. They're actually, they'll grow hardier, actually, to be fair. They'll, 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 they'll find their own when they're smaller, you know. 
And and you have all these people around Wexford and they're fascinated with a little skiak. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so someone said to me, so you're giving out little slips of skiaks? I said, yeah, an old skiak. I said, why? And people are kind of going, why would you give out a skiak? But sure, yeah, we're giving out skiaks. Actually, Johnstown Castle, they came on board as well. We had 300 from the council. And Johnstown Castle, the, um, oh, the name of the woman escapes me now. She, she rang me and said, I've got under 100 so that if people want to call and get them. Um, she sees the benefit as well. She's mad into local history and folklore and tradition. So uh, there's a um, so there. So that's four hundred May bushes, you know. Yeah. So the May bush it goes back a long time, and it was yeah. once a very popular festival, and it happened on crossroads and all over the place. Yeah. And then I remember you told me last year that it sort of waned and it was nearly gone. But there was a few areas in in County Wexford, I think, that sort of kept it going on the quiet. So, yeah. to whom do we owe the survival of the May bush in particular? Um, areas. Well, I, I I won't I won't give certain areas. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting texts. It's funny. I'm getting texts from a message from people going. I stopped doing it in 1973. There was a Jordan woman up here, the back of up in up here, the back of Kiltili. She was putting it up until 1973. There was a well, a woman called Elsie Donnelly down below in Timon. Elsie passed away. She kept it going in Timon. The Tree Bullet Gate down in Ross kept it going. Um, my mother would put it up on and off at home in Ballygarrett. Um, I'm sure that there was people in Adamstown. I've seen ones in Clonroach. I've seen further ones up north of the county, up around up Bunclody was always a big spot as well. Uh, even a lot of people from the travelling community in Bunclody would always put up a Maybush as well. There was one man, I can't remember his name, it was a wall, I think was his name, in Bunclody. He kept the tradition going there. Even in the Ballock, there used to be a, a midnight mass and a Maybush procession that used to take place in the Ballock up until the 60s. I think it was the 60s, maybe late 50s, 60s. You'll, you'll go around the county and you'll find different different, different, um, different, different places that kept it going. I won't say one particular place because if I do, someone will say to me, well, I did it up in Grand Ford and you never came to me, so I, I won't walk myself into that one. But it it, it was, it, it was kept quite... Well, it's, it's a good number of years ago since I came across it first and I was down in New Ross mm-hmm. and there was a man down there and he wanted to have a little festival, you know, with a few people, a few friends mm-hmm. and he wanted uh, publicised and we went down to talk to him. But... His May bush was a permanent one. It grew on a crossroads. It was there every day. Yeah. It, it was a mature one, a big, yeah. a big May bush. Yeah. And people would have passed by it every day. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was a common thing. There was one up in Hollyford, the exact same, up the crossroads up there. So a lot of them, uh, I don't know if the one Hollyford now was used as a May bush, but it was, but it was a skiak in the middle of a crossroads. There was even a skiak, there's a skiak called the Purty Skiak or the Pretty Skiak between Blackwater and in the Scarty and the Ballock Road there, out there as well. There's another one right in the middle of a, at, a, at a junction there as well. So there were, there were the people did decorate them. Catty Byrne up here in Ballandagan, she would have decorated, it was a norm, normal garden bush in her, in her garden. Every year she went out and decorated that. The, the skiaks were interesting then because we'd have they were I think they were they went back a lot in our in our history they were, a lot of our early early Christian settlements like you'd have places like Knock Skinnamalin the Knock of the Skiak of Moling you would have a skiak there's a skiak Moog I think down below near um, a Murrintown down around there somewhere um, so the skiaks were you know like skiak Faustine up here in, on the, across the border in Kilkenny as well so the, this the, these idea of skiaks uh, being used for um, as uh, a meeting points are kind of important points in, within communities where it, it goes back a very a long, long, long time, you know. There's a lovely one out in Kilmuckridge, actually, between Outlet and Kilmuckridge. It's on a, a, man, a man called Maiden showed it to me, oh, God, maybe 2015, and it was a, a lone bush with a stone, and he said it was always used for, for mass, and it was used for mass and penal times. Now, I don't know whether it was used for then, but if it was that old, but he said it, it, went, it went back to those times. A lot of our folklore, you'll come across skiaks used as well for uh, up around Hollyfort. I've come across a few cases of skiaks used for uh, to mark uh, where pikemen were killed and buried. So it would have been used for burial sites as well. I came across a case down in Camp Isle. There was a skiak planted. There was a man on the road who was a, a, what people would call it kind of a tramp years ago. And he wanted to be buried in Camp Isle graveyard. And he was buried and the skiak was buried and, uh, to mark his spot. So they're there. They're part of the fabric of, of, of a lot of, of, of history and folklore. And in the days when people had open fires, the Siak was a great guy for getting the blaze going. God, you wouldn't bring one in. <laughs> You'd be shot if you brought in the Siak. <laughs> well, or, or, or like a, an old gorse, piece, uh, sorry, you know, be the winner, you know, yellow, yellow gorse, would get it going. But the old people, if you brought a white thorn, blossom in particular, into the house, they'd run you. And I've seen people now, whatever, there's seen a few people now, one person up in Gorey, people bringing in a white thorn in, 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 inside, whatever. If any of the old people saw you bringing a white thorn in, especially the blossom, you'd be, you'd be ran. Wouldn't whatever it was, it was bad luck. Don't bring it indoors. I said the baby ones are grand. Maybe it's just a blossom. Maybe it's just well. A am I confused here now? Because my grandmother uh, used to uh, send you off for a brass a skiaks, 
for the fire. So yeah. they, they weren't exactly the Maybush. They were probably leftovers, were they? Or old skocks that yeah. sort of <laughs> were fit for nothing else. Well, no, you have, no. Here's here's the thing. There's, there's, there's nothing fixed in the vernacular, right? Like my my grandmother said, they used to put a white horn. Well, my mother used to put up a, a like you know gorse, not the old yellow gorse, but the, the furs. That's what she used to use for a maybush. And loads of people in Wexford would still put up a gorse. It's not always a white horn uh, at all. Um, so there's no, there's not, there's nothing fixed. So, but, but some gorse is a bush, isn't it? Yeah, gorse is a bush. Yeah, but some people call them skiox. So they'll all go up there and get me an old skiox. Mm. But you used a lovely word there, Dan. You said it was a brassna. What did your mother say? <laughs> um, the, 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 the bring in the brassna for the fire. Yes, a brassna of skiox. A brassna, yeah, mm. a brassna, yeah, exactly. And that's a gorgeous word. And, and I guarantee some of your listeners here will probably even remember, the older listeners will remember the word brust. Do you ever remember the word brust for yes. old bits of sticks? Yes, yes, yeah. small stuff. Old small broken stuff. up. And broken up, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, that was one of the duties of a young fella back in those days. And sure, you wouldn't know one scout from another, but they'd all burn anyway and set fire to the chimney if you were lucky. And then you were in trouble. Yeah, you were, yeah. And it's funny you said about setting fires. Actually, we're coming up to Pancake Tuesdays next, next, to 20, next week, 25th, I think it is. And, uh, and my mother always had it, they would keep, and I came across some people up in the north of the county as well, they would keep the holly from Christmas, and they'd always use that to light the fire on Pancake Tuesday in the morning to make the pancakes. For whatever reason, they did it. They did it. Uh, Mammy did it in Ballygarrett, uh, well, up in Clumucris, where she lived. And I remember meeting a man called uh, Seamus Bulger up in Clonsilla and Gorey. He remembered doing it. He remembered his mother doing it, yeah. Well, Michael Fortune, now all the, the, the May bushes are gone, that are all part of the planting scheme, and hopefully they're in the ground, and the, the weather's not very warm at the moment, <laughs> but they will come on. Yeah. But in the meantime, there are people out there who don't know enough about their skiok, and you're <laughs> going to put them right. You're going to give a talk, I think, on Saturday at two venues. So yeah. anybody is out there and they're not sure about the skiok or they think we're having them on, uh, they should go along and you'll, you'll put them right. We, we will, yeah. We, we'll, try to, we'll try to clear up the muddy water. But listen, there's, there's nothing fixed in the, in the in vernacular. But listen, one, one, on this coming Saturday, I'm in Gorey Library and I'm in Bunclody Library. And we will actually, Dan, I'm actually, by, 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 by hook or by crook, we're going to get my hands on a few more skiocks. So we're going to be we're going to have a bunch in Gorey, a small bunch in Gorey and a small bunch in Bunclody in the library. So we're working with the Tidy Towns in, in, um, in Gorey on Saturday. And oh, what time are you in Gorey? We're in Gorey from ten uh, thirty until uh, one one p.m. The morning session. Morning. So if you want to come in early, yeah, if you want to come in, come in early and get them. We'll be doing a little talk there th- then, and then I'm nipping down to Bunclody. Then we're doing a, a, a talk, uh, a talk down there as well, and giving out some more there. And that's from two thirty in Bunclody Library. So anyone wants to know anything about the Maybush uh, and and the Wexford Maybush Festival, it's all there. Michael Fortune, it's always great talking to you. And I suppose the f- the election is over now. The folklore continues and um, it's always enjoyable. So good luck with the Maybush Festival. It's, it's going to be a busy time. Yeah. There'll be events on again in May when, when the event comes around. Yeah, there are going to be events in May. We got some support from, from uh, Wexford County Council, the Arts Department, under the festival scheme to do a, a, a concert, a concert of traditional song and music. So we're working on that now. We have to figure out exactly where it's going to be, but it's going to be a lovely event come uh, May Day. Um, so keep 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 your eyes, your eyes and ears out for that. Well, we'll come back to him. We'll talk to you again when it gets closer to uh, actual May Day, and we'll tell people where the various events are happening, and they can go along and enjoy them. Um, Michael Fortune, thanks for talking to us. Brilliant. Thanks a million, Dan.